Hello everyone, my name is Julia Bird and I'm a STEM ambassador for the West Tennessee STEM Hub. Today we will be making milk plastic holiday ornaments, so stay tuned. The materials that we'll need today are milk. 1% tends to work the best, but feel free to use any milk you have on hand. White vinegar, silicone molds, ribbon or ornament hooks. And some of the tools you'll need are going to be a measuring cup, um, as well as a one tablespoon measuring instrument. You'll need a bowl, a microwave or a stove, uh, you can use either one, spoons, and paper towel. Some optional things that you may or may not have on hand um, that could potentially enhance this activity, again, not necessary, are paint to paint your ornament once it's done, cheesecloth, which just helps separate the curds better, um, well, we'll get there, <laughs> a hot glue gun to help you um, hot glue your ribbon if you don't happen to have a hole in your specific mold, and then clear coat spray to spray after you paint. Again, that's all optional. You can choose to just leave your ornament as it is whenever it's finished drying. Okay, so some fun history behind the milk plastic. Milk uh, was commonly used to make different plastic ornaments. It was used to make buttons, buckles, beads, fountain pens, all kinds of fancy stuff. And Queen Mary herself actually wore um, milk plastic jewelry. So you'll be making some pretty fancy stuff today. Here on the right uh, are just some milk plastic buttons. So what is plastic? Uh, plastic is made of molecules that repeat themselves in a chain. Uh, polymers can be chains of either one type of molecule or a bunch of different types, um, which are linked together in a very regular pattern. As you can see on the picture on the right, it's just repeating units. You see those um, blue rings, those little attachment molecules, and that's what a polymer looks like on the atomic level. So the question you've been wondering up to this point is how can milk make plastic? Well, you're about to find out. So milk contains a protein called casein, and casein can be uh, made into a chain, much like in the last picture you saw, um, of casein to make polymer. Uh, the polymer can be scooped up and molded, which we will do today. And the plastic made from milk is called casein plastic. So if you want to look up um, what uh, milk plastic can be used for, casein plastic might be a term that you use or maybe a more common term that you'll see whenever you make your search. So these are just a couple of the resources that I use for our activity today. Okay, so to begin this activity, what we need to do is take our one cup measuring utensil and fill it with milk. For me, I'm just using one cup, but that is because I have a relatively small mold. Here, I'll show it to you. It's teeny tiny. It might look a little bit bigger on camera, but it can go on a keychain. So I'm not going to make too much of this, but if you uh, get a silicone mold that has multiple of these little spaces to make your ornaments, go ahead and make more of this um, milk mixture. You can double, triple, whatever you need. But for me, I'm starting off with one cup of milk. So I'm just going to pour it into my Tupperware. And what we need to do is heat our milk until it's steaming. So we don't want it to overheat um, and burn, but what I'm going to do personally is put it in the microwave and I will put it in for say uh, 15 second intervals, maybe I'll up it to 30, and just until some steam is rising up. You can also do this activity on the stove, but it's a little more safe to do it in the microwave. So I'll go ahead and heat up my milk and then check right back in with you. All right, so I stuck this in for 30 seconds, checked it, another 30, checked it, and then finally for 30 more seconds, and it is finally steaming. So I put mine in for a total of a minute and 30 seconds and checked it at 30 second intervals. So now that my milk is steaming, what I want to do is take one tablespoon of white vinegar. Okay, 
So after you pour in the vinegar, you will instantly see your mixture start to change. All right. I'm going to go ahead and grab my spoon and just stir it up. You'll start to see um, a white yellow mixture. There will be a yellow liquid with this white sort of goopy substance. That white substance is actually our protein, which is what we are going to make our polymer out of. So this is the fun part. What we're going to do is you can either take your cheesecloth or your paper towel. It really doesn't matter. Um, cheesecloth might just give you a better separation of the liquid and the solid, but a paper towel will do just fine, everyone. So I'm going to move you over to the sink, and then we are going to separate our liquid from our solid. Okay, everyone, so we're back here at the sink, and what I am going to do is I'm going to take my cheesecloth. You can take your paper towel or your cheesecloth, whichever you have. I'm going to take it, and I'm just going to cover the entire lid of my bowl. I'm going to make it nice and tight so that uh, nothing escapes out of the sides. What I'm going to do is start to pour away from me. If you need, go ahead and have, you know, a sibling or an adult help you with this. But I'm just going to go ahead, dump it on over, and just get all the nasty liquid out. Okay? So I'm going to flip it back over. And then I'm going to take that cheesecloth. And I'm gonna pour my solid into my hand. Okay, so you can see my chunks here. If you feel it, it feels kind of mushy. If you've ever had cottage cheese or anything like that, that's what it'll feel like. And that's basically what it is, you know, curds. So you can go ahead and you can just start to kind of squeeze some of that liquid out. Okay, so after you've squeezed with either your cheesecloth or your first paper towel, what I want you to do, go ahead and grab a second paper towel. I'm just gonna grab mine right over here off of camera. Grab that second paper towel and put your curds into it. Okay? So now you see this nice ball of curds here in my paper towel. And I'm just gonna try to get out as much of the liquid as I really can. You wanna try to make your curds nice and dry. As it starts to dry out, you'll notice it feels more like a plasticky sort of consistency. That's really what we're going for. This is about my third time squeezing it. It's feeling pretty dry. I'll probably just squeeze it dry a couple more times because I'm still getting a good amount of liquid here. And the drier you make it, the faster it'll dry out too in your ornament mold. Okay, so it's feeling very dry now and it's looking like this. Okay, I'll meet you back over on the counter. Okay, so now you can see my mold, again, my little snowman. And I'm just going to pack this, oh, actually, before I forget, if you want, go ahead and grab some glitter, pause this video, feel free to put some glitter in this and make it shiny. Me, I just don't happen to have any glitter on hand, so I'm going to go ahead and push my plastic into my mold. But yeah. You want to add glitter, if not, go ahead and continue on. So I'm just going to tear off pieces of this, push it flat into my mold. I have some little cracks in my mold from my snowman's top hat, so I'm going to try to fill those as well as I can. Whenever you're pushing in your uh, milk curds, try to push them as flat as possible, get out any possible air bubbles that you might get underneath. That will help your design come out nice and smoothly. 
All right. I'll tuck back in with you after I push all of my curds into my mold. Okay, everyone. So I'm back with my uh, completely padded in mold. As you can see, I made sure to fill in all of the little cracks of my snowman and patted it firm just to make sure I got out all the bubbles. So what we're gonna do now is just go ahead and leave it. You can discard your extra casein. And what we're gonna do is we are gonna let this sit for at least 24 hours. So I'll see you in a full day from now. Hi there, everyone. So it's been 24 hours and I'm going to go ahead and check my ornament. This is what it looks like now. You can see that the ornament has dried quite a bit and you can see a little gap in my mold. But okay, I'm going to go ahead and peel it out. Looking pretty good so far. Oh wow, check that out, it came out perfectly. All right. So this is the step where if you'd like to, you can go ahead and paint your ornaments, you know, feel free to do that. Spray it with some clear spray if you'd like. And if not, you can go ahead and leave it as is. I'm gonna go ahead and hang my ornament. As you can see, I have my branches here. If you don't have a tree, go ahead and hang it wherever you like. Oh, and this is important too. So my mold came with a hole at the top that I could just kind of put my hook through. But if you don't have a hole in your mold, that is completely okay. Um, go ahead and use maybe some super glue or a hot glue gun and go ahead and glue your ribbon or your hook to your ornaments. Let's see. Just making sure my ornaments on my hook pretty well. All right, I'm gonna hang it up where everyone can see. All right, well, thank you all for doing this activity with me and I hope you had fun. Bye-bye.